Today we're going to be talking about operations with radical expressions. So what this means is you can break up a radical expression into two different radical inequality in two radical expressions that you're then going to be able to simplify. Or you can combine two radical expressions into one so that you're also able to simplify. Okay, so this first example, let's separate this out into our radical expressions. Square root of 25, a to the fourth, and b to the ninth. So the square root of 25, that's the easy one, that's going to be 5. Now, the square root of a to the fourth, think of that like a squared squared. Because the squared and the squared are going to cancel, so you're going to end up with a squared. Now, b to the ninth. You have to separate that into b to the eighth times by b. Because 8 is an even number and your index is even. So then you can separate that even further into b times b to the fourth squared, because we need the square root and the square to cancel. So that simplifies to 5a squared. The b to the fourth can break out of that radical. And then now we're just left with a square root of b underneath our radical. Now the one below it. OK, cube root of 125 times by the cube root of m to the 30th and the cube root of p to the 20th. So the cube root of 125, that's a nice number, and that ends up being 5. The cube root of m to the 30th. So break down 30 into a factor of 3. 3 times 10 gets me 30, so that's a 10 underneath there. And you need to break down 20 into the largest multiple of 3 that we have. Let's get a B. P to the 18th, so that's P to the 6 cubed, P to the 6 cubed, is p to the 18th, but I have p to the 20th, so I have p squared left over. So now we are left with 5 times m to the 10th times by the p to the 6th breaks out because the cubic root and the cube cancel each other out, and then underneath the radical, we have p squared. Okay, so some properties of radicals. So when you have a radical, you can split up that radical into both the numerator and denominator and simplify. And that goes true for square roots or cube roots. And then when you're trying to rationalize the denominator, so in this first example, you guys know how to rationalize the denominator from geometry. So you multiply by, if it's just a square root, you'd multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3. But now what you have to do on the bottom here is you'd have to multiply. If your denominator was something that's not a square root, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Because what we need is we need x to be a multiple of this n index. So you take n and you subtract from x. Basically, we need to change this. Cube root of 2, we need to multiply by something here. That's going to make that the cube root of 2 cubed. Well, what is that? You need to multiply by some radical. Well, you would combine what's underneath your radical by addition, those, x, those powers. So therefore, that's why you multiply by 2 cubed. You'd multiply by 2 squared, which would eventually get you 2 cubed. And hopefully this will make sense here once I go through a few examples. Okay, simplify that expression. So let's simplify this into y to the 8th over 
square root of x to the seventh. And let's simplify each one of those radicals. So y to, the square root of y to the eighth is y to the fourth. And then the square root of x to the seventh, well, that's x to the sixth times by x, which is going to simplify to x to the third times by the square root of x. Now I need to simplify that radical. So I need to multiply by root x over root x to get y to the fourth over with an x square root of x on top. And then on the bottom, we have x to the third times x, so that's x to the fourth. Okay, the next example. We have, let's change this to the cube root of 2 over the cube root of 9 times by the cube root of x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to deal with each one of these radicals in the bottom a different way. For the variable, I think the variable is the, the easier one to think about. So for our variable, we need eventually, when I multiply by, whatever I multiply by, I need that to be the cube root of x cubed. I already have 1x, so that's why I need to multiply by the cube root of x squared. That's going to cancel out because then I can combine this cube root of x and the cube root of x squared under one radical to get cube root of x cubed. Now I also need to multiply by something that's going to cancel out this 9. What's the first perfect, or what's the closest perfect cube to 9 that I could multiply 9 to? Well, 1 cubed, we know is 1. 2 cubed is 8. I can't add or subtract anything. I can only multiply. So if I look at 3 cubed, that's 27. So if I multiply by the cube root of 3, if I multiply by this thing, by the cube root of 3, that turns that into the cube root of 27. 27 is a perfect cube, so that's going to simplify. Remember what you do on the top, you have to do on the bottom, so I needed... I need to really just be multiplying by 1, which is what I'm doing there. Okay, so let's look at what the top's going to become. So the numbers can combine and be multiplied together. And then this, there's no variables to combine with, so it's just the cube root of x squared. So then on the bottom, the cube root, a 27 turns into a 3, the cube root of x cubed turns into an x, and then on, on the top, since those are the same root, we can combine those under one radical. Okay. Okay, now multiplying radicals. Really, we've been doing this all along. You can combine all this stuff under one radical. So the 100 times the 10 can be 1,000. The a squared times the a can turn into a cubed. Now it's just a matter of finding the cube root of those. The cube root uh, 1,000 is 10. The cube root of a cubed is a. So this is going to simplify to 50a. All right, now we have the fourth root. Combine the 2 and the 3 to get a 6. Now we have everything else under the fourth root of something. Combine your numbers together. 8 times 2, 16. x cubed, x to the fifth, you add those exponents. And then y squared, y squared, y to the fourth. Okay, <clears throat> so now what we can do 
is we can do each one of those individually. We still have the sixth out front. The fourth root of 16, four of the same things that multiply to 16, are, is 2. The fourth root of 8, remember a, x to the 8th can become x squared to the 4th. So those cancel to just be left with an x squared. And then lastly, we have the fourth root of x to the 4th that simplifies to be... I'm sorry, the fourth root of y to the fourth. So that simplifies to be y. But remember that absolute value stuff we were talking about yesterday? This still applies here because the absolute value gets applied to the y because this y can be negative, but when I fourth root it, it's going to end up being positive. So it's the absolute value of that y. So that's our final answer. Okay, now simplifying radicals. All you have to do when you're adding or subtracting radicals is make sure that underneath the radical, you reduce each one of those radicals, and you can only combine like radicals, like 7 root 2 plus 9 root 2. You can only combine them if underneath the radical is the same thing. So root 45, that breaks down into 9 times 5, 80, breaks down into, well notice in the first one I have 5 times something. So see if 5 can go in, that's going to go in 16 times. And then 20 is 4 times 5. Now it's just a matter of the 9 comes out becomes a 3. That 3 gets multiplied to that 3 to become a 9. 16 breaks out and becomes a 4. 4 times 5 is 20. This 4 breaks out and becomes a 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Now it's just combining like terms. Since my radicals are all the same thing, I can just combine to get negative 3 root 5. All right, for this one, it's just a matter of foiling. First terms together. So that's 6 root 3. <clears throat> Outer terms together. Since those radicals are the same, it becomes 2 times 3, which is 6. Insides together, 9 root 5. And then last terms together, minus 3 root 15. Now, there's no common radicals, and I have everything. There's no perfect squares inside our radicals. So even though that's long, we can't combine that anymore. So that's our final answer. Okay, example six, simplifying radicals in the denominator. What you have to do is you have to multiply, very similar to what we did when we had i's, we multiplied by the conjugate of the bottom. And you have to multiply by the same thing on the top that you do the bottom. So notice what happens when we multiply out the bottom. When I multiply out the bottom, the first terms are 6. The outer terms are minus root 12. The inner terms are plus root 12. And the last term is minus 2. Make sure you're not making that minus 4. Okay, because root 6 times root 6 that's the square root of 36, which is 6. Root 2 times root 2, that's the square root of 4, which ends up being 2. Careful on that, okay? Now, first terms together on the top, root 6. Outer terms, minus root 12. Inner terms, less terms. And actually, I made a mistake here on this top. That should actually be a 6. Okay, so now simplifying. On the top, we have 8 minus 2 root 12. On the bottom, 6 minus 2, which is 4. The square roots go away. That's why the conjugate works, because it takes care of the square roots on the bottom. 6 minus 2 is 4. Now with that 12, I have to pull out my... Um, 
Um, I have to pull out my perfect square of four, so the two becomes a four. And now we have to divide everything by four, which simplifies to two minus root three. There are your lesson questions. Um, please make sure those are submitted on time. And I know that you're going to have some challenge with some of those because of the roots. But just put like root when you're trying to put the square root of something. And if it's something like the fourth root, put a little fourth in front of it. Fourth root of something. And again, please make sure those are submitted on time for me. Thank you.